There was this other show I, I started watching. I'm in the middle of it. Right, in fact, it, I'll probably have finished watching it by the time you see this. But um, uh, my wife and I, uh, a lot of times we watch stand-up comedies and stuff. And um, we watched uh, some Kevin Hart uh, stand-ups, which are really funny. But he has this show called uh, True Story. And it's not a comedy at all. It's like a, a dead serious, like Breaking Bad style. Um, Whoa. Like murder thriller suspense series. And um, I didn't know anything about it. You know, we just put it on and I'm like totally hooked from the first episode, which which does not happen often with me. But um, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything about it, but um, it's basically like your average, um, above average, but I mean, typical of uh, like plot wise, it's typical to like any of those stories, which is about where, you know, it starts with a dead body and they got to cover it up but it gets worse and worse and the stakes keep getting higher as it goes on. So right now, like things are out of control and I'm just like, you know, I, I can't wait to see what happens. I love that because I'm also watching a series that is about murder and mystery and crime and all of that. I'm really getting into Dexter New Blood, which is like the continuation of the original Dexter show. Do either of you guys watch Dexter? I'm actually not. I mean, I know about it, but I'm yeah. not familiar with, with Dexter. But I know I know it's a big show, but I've never seen it. Yeah. So the idea of Dexter is he's a serial killer. And Dexter's deal is that, you know, every serial killer has like a profile of like why they do what they do. And he kills bad people, right? So when you're watching Dexter, there's always a balance between him being a killer who kills people, but then the people he kill, like, they're criminals, they're, you know, they, they do bad things, they're, they're, they're not the type of people, you know, in the show, several of the people he killed were actually other serial killers, right? Yeah, it's the kind of thing where, like, everyone's a bad guy, like, not like to bring up Sopranos again, but it's kind of like, you're rooting for him, but you really shouldn't. So the show got to the point where it kind of had to go off the air because the stakes were just so high. And now it's been several years since it went off the air and it's back and it, it feels great. I mean, Dexter's older, obviously. Um, his his son finds out where he was hanging out, hiding out in the first episode. And, you know, it's different because the original show took place in Miami. Mm. But this one takes place out in the mountains somewhere. And it's very different seeing the character in this like small town setting rather than in Miami in this like big city. But, you know, my wife and I are watching it and it's it's been great to watch. It sounds like something I'd like. I think you would. Oh, cool. Did you have to start from the, you know, beginning though? Uh, there's a lot of callbacks. Probably there's helps. a lot of callbacks. This show is for people who have seen the other one. But the good news is with like streaming... If you wanted to see it, you'd find it, you know? <laughs> well, that's a big thing now. Now you have, like, like to bring up The Sopranos again, now you have Many Saints of Newark. Yeah. Like, a lot of shows are either getting rebooted, movies, new seasons, all that stuff. It's kind of, it's you know, it's kind of like a renaissance for that kind of stuff. I'm sorry. Other than the references, like, oh, that's Christopher's whatever. It's that's different. this guy. Many Saints of Newark didn't do it for me like Sopranos did. Uh, I love Sopranos. I've probably watched it three or four times all the way through. I want to see that. Many states in Newark, it's okay. Mm. It's not bad. So a lot of people told me if you like Breaking Bad, you got to check out Better Call Saul. Now, a lot of people warned me it's a lot slower, but I was like, I, you know, I'm fine with that. I'll, I'll check it out. And uh, it's been a while now since I've seen it, but I caught up uh, when like season four was going on, I think. So uh, now I'm all, I think it was season five was the last one. So I basically started watching the new ones as they were coming out. But anyway, I, I saw the entire series of Better Call Saul and I hate to say like it did not hook me whatsoever. I mean, it, it had some good moments. Like there were some really good episodes in there, but oh my God, like it, it's like watching paint dry. Oh. And um, there's even there's even like a part in there where you're, you're watching them paint their office. <laughs> and it's this like montage of just painting the walls. I'm like, oh my God. There, I mean, like I said, there is good stuff in there, but there is so much, like it just feels like it's stretched out way too much. 
and Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, not the same thing at all. I'm sorry to say. Did you watch um, El Camino? Oh, El Camino was great. Yeah, that was awesome. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. I just wanted to see what happened to Jesse afterwards, and that's what we got. And I really love the uh, the vacuum cleaner guy. It is so interesting. Like, how does he um, do the stuff he does? How does he erase their identities and do all that? Like, he's such a mysterious character. It's a shame uh, the actor passed away. I think like I think the day El Camino came out, actually. Actually, yeah, that was a shame. He was in a lot of old uh, TV stuff and everything. 